Hey guys, it's Dean. Welcome to Manflow Yoga. You are about to watch a full length 35 minute workout taken directly from my book, Yoga Fitness for Men. This is the total body strength routine focused on building strength, mobility, and increasing your flexibility. Stick around at the end and I'll tell you how to get six bonus videos accompanying the book. Enjoy. Hey guys, it's Dean. Welcome to Manful Yoga. This video is the total body strength routine from my upcoming book, Yoga Fitness for Men. So we're going to be going through a full body workout today focusing on develop, developing strength, mobility, core strength, endurance, basically everything that you can expect from a fitness centric yoga workout. We're going to be going through that today. This is one of the more difficult workouts from the book, so I hope you enjoy. And uh, for more info on the book, there will be a description in uh, whatever you're watching this below. Uh, you can get the book now on pre-order, and if it's after May 8th, you can get the book uh, at bookstores or on Amazon. Let's get to it. So for the workout, all you will need is a yoga mat and a block, um, a strap, you may need a strap, but most likely you will not need a strap for the workout. Again, we're going to be doing full body today. Um, and if you have any injuries in your shoulders uh, or your hands that you're working with right now or your wrist, um, I'm going to give you modifications uh, as I can. Uh, but just be aware of any aches and pains or other issues that you're going through and uh, be careful to make adjustments as necessary. All right, here we go. We're gonna start off in a high lunge. So this workout really gets right into the poses. We're not gonna have a lot of warm up because the poses themselves are the warm up. High lunge, right foot forward, left leg back, knee over your ankle in your front foot. Now as soon as we get into this, start putting the weight into your hips and your core. Make sure that you're not leaning forward and putting the weight all into the front thigh. Squeeze your legs toward one another, really drive down through that right heel, lift your ribs up away from your hips, and bring your arms overhead. Pull your neck toward the back and relax your chin. As you inhale, you're gonna get taller. As you exhale, maybe sinking a little bit deeper into this lunge. Breathing slow and controlled in and out of the nose. Even as you start to get tired, try to maintain that slow controlled breathing. One more breath. And then go ahead and step back up, switch sides, right leg back, left foot forward. Again, checking in with the knee, making sure that's right above the ankle in the front, squeezing your legs toward one another to help square the hips. That's also going to help engage your inner thighs, which relieves pressure on the knee and also helps you engage your core. Push down through your left heel and the ball of your foot so you feel the weight in your left hip. You wanna feel that glute activating. Feeling a stretch through the front of the right hip and again, creating some height with your ribs, lifting up away from your hips, pulling the top of your head toward the ceiling and pulling or tucking your chin back toward your throat. Bring the arms overhead and hold here for, let's do about two more deep breaths here. Try to make your breath at least eight seconds, maybe up to 10 seconds. So when I say one breath, I'm usually aiming for about 10 seconds. One more breath. All right, stand back up, bring your toes together, take it straight into a chair pose. Drop the knees just a little bit, shift your hips toward the back, hinging at the hips, bring your arms up, make sure that your back is flat, keep your abs tight so we're not ballooning the chest open and splaying open the ribs, we actually wanna keep a nice straight line. And really pressing the hips back, getting the weight into your glutes. Make sure that your neck is in line with the rest of your spine so you're looking down slightly and forward instead of straight forward. And then arms are up and squeezing back. One more breath here. See if you can sit a little bit lower. Squeeze your legs toward one another. And then stand up. Keep your feet the same. Reach your arms up, interlace your fingers straight into a standing back bend. Lift your sternum toward the ceiling. Press the top of your head away from your body and then squeeze your arms back. Press down through your heels. Keep your tailbone reaching down so your lower back stays neutral. We aren't arching the back here, the lower back at least. 
So you want to bend from the mid back up. Again, thinking sternum aiming at the ceiling and arms squeezing back. Get a little bit taller, go a little bit deeper. One more breath. And then bring it back. Keep your arms overhead. Moving into a standing side bend from here. Breathe in, lift up. Exhale, side bend to the right. Press your hips toward the left. Stay nice and tall. So the top of your head is pressing toward the ceiling. Pushing down firmly through your feet. Feeling a stretch from the outside of your left hip all the way up through the shoulder. Your abs, your core is tight. So not just the abs, but also your hips are engaged. And again, staying as tall as you can. Our goal here is length through the body, so height, and then working into our depth. One more deep breath here. Bring it back to the middle. Inhale, get tall. Exhale to the left, hips toward the right, making a nice kind of a bow shape with your body. Fingertips pressing up, top of your head pressing up, so still getting really tall here. And hips pressing toward the right so you feel that stretch through the side of the body. This is a really good pose for relieving tension in your back by helping to stretch your hips and your shoulders, getting your body moving in different ways. It's also very good for strengthening your core and opening up the shoulders. One more deep breath here. See if you can go a little bit deeper. And then bring it back to the middle. Release your hands. Take it down into a plank. Plant your hands. Step to the back of the mat. Hands under your shoulders. Pull your neck toward the ceiling. Look slightly forward. Make sure that your hips are up. And then squeeze your legs toward one another. Plank is a full body exercise. So we want the thighs engaged. We want the core engaged. You should feel your upper back and your chest working here, and the shoulders, not just your arms. And then again, making sure that you're keeping the neck pulled toward the ceiling and looking slightly forward to help strengthen the neck as well. One more breath. And then into a side plank. If you have issues with your palms, go down to your forearm. If not, you can go all the way up to your hand. And you wanna stack your shoulders on top of one another. Lift your hips as high as you can toward the ceiling and then extend your arm up. If you need to take a knee down because you have trouble balancing, that's fine. Just take the right knee down here. Otherwise, stack the feet, lift your hips high, keep the shoulders or your right shoulder right above your right hand and then stack the left shoulder and your left hand right above that. So I'm making a straight line from your right hand all the way up to the left hand and again, hips hiking up. So that's actually going to help strengthen your hips. We're also working on the obliques. One breath here. Go ahead and switch sides. Side plank, other side. So roll to the outside of your left foot now. Reach your right arm up. Again, stacking your left shoulder on top of the hand. Right shoulder above the left shoulder. And then right arm straight up. Lift your hips toward the ceiling. So you want to feel the outer left thigh and the hip engage. And again, if you need to, you can take that left knee down as a variation. You can also bring the left forearm to the ground as another variation if you have issues with your wrist. Again, hips are as high as possible no matter where your arms are. One more breath here. I'm going to go back up into that hand variation, but just showing you the different variations you can do. And then go ahead and release your hand back down, back into a plank, lower down all the way onto your chest, take it into a cobra. Flip your feet, squeeze your legs toward one another, press the tops of your feet into the ground, and then lift your chest just using your core strength. So we're gonna feel this in the hips, the thighs, and your core. You're not pressing into the ground with your hands. You're using your core to lift. Squeeze your elbows back and up. Lengthen your neck, press the top of your head away from your body, and then look slightly forward. One more breath here. And then slowly release down. Take it back into a down dog. So you're making a pyramid shape with your body here. Pressing down through your hands, stretching through your shoulders. Squeezing your thighs toward your chest. 
internally rotating the thighs so the knees face straight forward. And then lifting your hips up, trying to aim your tailbone at the ceiling. So we want to get this tilt through the spine so that your tailbone is aiming up and not back. This is uh, different from a plank. Keep the arms active by squeezing your arms toward one another. And then squeeze your thighs. So you should be feeling stretching through your back here. You should be feeling stretching through the backs of your legs, through your calves, through your hamstrings. And we want to feel hip engagement and core engagement. So you want to feel the muscles in your abs and the muscles in the fronts of your thighs tight and engaged here. One more breath. And then step to a deep squat. So come up about halfway up the mat. Turn your toes slightly out. Sit your hips down. Bring your arms out in front of you. Drive your knees out and squeeze your glutes. So you want to make sure that you're not leaning forward here. And you make sure, make sure that your heels are on the ground. So if you need to, you can come up a little bit higher to make sure your heels stay down. And if your heels stay down, then you can sit lower. We also want to work on leaning back into the squat. That makes it much more difficult, and that's going to help you strengthen your core and uh, also going to help you strengthen your glutes and prevent injury in the knees. So again, try to lean back into the squat, even to the point where you feel like you may fall over. You can bring your arms straight out in front of you, or for more of a challenge, lift your arms all the way overhead as high as possible. One more breath here. Weight in the hips. Chest is lifted. And exhale to stand up. Reach your arms straight up and then release your arms. Go ahead and step to the top of the mat. Step back into a runner's lunge. So left foot all the way to the back of the mat. This is where the block comes into play. So grab a block, put that inside your right foot. Bring your left hand on top of the block. Squeeze your legs toward one another, just like we did for the high lunge. Reach your right arm up and then twist. So your body, the front of your body is facing out to the right. We wanna roll back that right shoulder look up at the right hand, use that block if you need to for support with balance. If you feel like you can do it without the block, go ahead and move the block, maybe just use the fingertips on the ground instead, and then maybe move the fingertips away from the ground altogether to challenge yourself even more. One more breath. Release your hand down, step all the way back up to mountain pose, and switch sides. So now the right leg comes back, Starting in the runner's lunge, squeeze the legs toward one another. So left foot squeezing back, right foot squeezing forward. Lengthen your torso. So try to make the front of your body from your pubic bone to your throat as long as you can. Right hand on top of the block inside the left foot. Open up your left arm, twist. The left arm reaches up toward the ceiling. Try to keep the hips squared so the legs are still squeezing toward one another. And I'm keeping that left hip pressing down. So this is helping to strengthen my core. I'm also strengthening my back with this twist. This is really good for as a, uh, a way to prevent and also to uh, fix back pain. So strengthening the muscles that get weak from sitting. Again, if you want to challenge yourself, maybe adjusting the block so you're not using the block as much or moving the block entirely and just balancing on your fingertips. Last little bit. Go ahead and release your hand down and then step back up to mountain pose. All right, from here we're moving into some balancing. First one is a standing bow. So you're gonna stand on your right foot. You're gonna bring your left heel in toward your butt. Grab the inside of your left toes. Make sure that your arm is turning out so the bicep face is out and not in. That's really important. Allow your knees to come toward one another. If this is difficult, you can use a strap to grip your foot instead of your hand. Go ahead and bring your right arm straight up in the air. Stand up as tall as you can. Deep breath in. Exhale, press back into your left hand. Reach forward with your right hand. Squeeze your right hip. Drive down through the right heel. Reach your tailbone back so you're keeping your core tight and you're trying to keep the length through your lower back. And then lift up with your chest. So we're pressing really firmly into the left hand with the foot. We're reaching up high with your right hand, keeping your hips above your right heel, and again, opening up the chest. So this is full body. You should feel a lot of work in your right leg, 
but also that left leg stays active too. One more breath. And then stand back up, release your left foot down, release the hand, switch sides. Now balancing on my left foot, bring your right heel in toward your butt, grab the inside of your right foot, bring your left arm straight up in the air, breathe in, exhale, press your right foot into your right hand, hinge forward, so hinging forward, keep your hips above your left heel, make sure that your hips aren't going out behind you, but staying right above, maybe a slight bend to the knee, but not significantly bending the knee, the left knee, I mean. And then again, grow with your chest, reach your left arm up high, and really press hard into your right foot. Now, don't compare yourself to how deep I get into this pose. If you're right here, if you're just going forward a little bit, and you're feeling some good engagement through the hip, you're feeling a good stretch, you're feeling like you're working hard, that's great. Don't push beyond to where you're ready. So you wanna make the pose work for you, don't just try to copy me. Stay nice and tall here, pressing firmly into that foot, growing with your chest, lifting up with the left hand, squeezing the left thigh, and then go ahead and release. All right, from here, standing finger to toe. So I invite you to use a strap here if you feel like you might need it. We're gonna stand on the right foot. You're gonna put the strap around your left foot, balancing on your right foot, press down through the heel, stand up nice and tall, grab the strap with your left hand, and now lift your left leg straight out and stand up as tall as you can. So we're using the strap to help us out here. Now if this is easy for you, you can take the strap away, grab your big toe, and then extend the foot out. Make sure that your hips stay above your heel here so you're not bringing your butt out behind you and you're not bending your knee and pressing your hips forward and doing anything, anything janky like that. So again, make sure that you're keeping the legs straight, driving down through your heel and staying tall. To make this more difficult, lift the leg higher, stand up taller. Try to lock out the right leg, squeeze your thigh, one breath. And then go ahead and bend the knee and release. Switching sides, again, you have the option to use the strap if you need it. Stand on your left foot, bring your right knee up to hip level, stand up tall, grab your big toe, your right big toe with your index and middle finger, and now extend that leg forward, push down through your left heel, stand up as tall as you can, driving your hips forward here. You're gonna feel stretching in both hamstrings. You're also gonna feel your core and your hips working. Try to get that leg straight, so driving down through your left foot, lifting your right leg actively, so using the strength in your right hip to lift your leg, not just relying on your arm here. Maybe placing your hand on your left hip for a little more stability. And then one more breath here. Reaching the toes back toward your shin. To feel a nice stretch in the calf as well. And then go ahead and bend the knee and release. All right, next balancing pose is eagle. So I'm gonna have you start in a chair pose because that's the easiest way to start. So toes touch, heels an inch apart. Sit down into a chair pose. Squeeze your thighs toward one another. Bring your hips back. Stay up nice and tall. From here, we're gonna lift up the right leg, cross it over the left leg. Bring your arms straight out to the sides, and then swing your right arm under your left arm. Lift your elbows, lean back into eagle pose. This can be a weird pose at first. If you cannot interlace fingers, what you can do is grab the backs of your shoulders instead. And if you feel like you're having trouble balancing here, then you don't have to go as deep. You can stay up a little bit taller. And if you're falling out like you see me doing here, then just get back into it and do your best. It's fine if you fall out, but what matters is whether or not you give up. Again, you wanna lean back into this pose, pull your belly button toward your spine, sit down into this, and then lift your elbows and your forms away from your face. So we're feeling working in the hips, in the core, and stretching in the upper back. Go ahead and stand up, release your arms, swing them out wide, and then sit back into that chair again. We're gonna switch sides. Squeeze your knees, squeeze your thighs toward one another. Arms are still out. Now wrap your left leg over your right leg. Keep your hips squared forward. 
So make sure that you're not turning your hips out to one side or the other. Hairs, uh, hips stay squared forward. And now we're gonna swing the left arm under the right arm. Interlace your fingers. If you can, interlace all the fingers, or maybe just get your thumb to your index finger, whatever you can do, or wrap up your shoulders with your hands if that's difficult. Sit down into this pose, lift your elbows, and now lean back into eagle. Again, it doesn't matter if you fall over. What's important is doing your best and getting back into it, even if you do fall out of it. Try to keep your torso long. So stay up tall here. Stay long from your pubic bone, through your sternum, through your throat. Try to sit down into this. You want to feel a lot of this weight in your right glute. So right in the hip. Elbows up and forms away from the face. One more breath here. And then go ahead and stand up. Bring your arms out and release your hands. Final balancing pose is a warrior three, arguably the most difficult balance. This one's only gonna last for 20 seconds. So maximum effort. Step your right foot forward, your left foot back, just like you would do a high lunge. Bring your arms overhead, interlace your fingers. Our goal here is to make a T shape with the body. Take a deep breath in, lift. Exhale, press down through your right foot, lift your left foot off the ground, reach your toes back, press your fingertips forward, make that T shape with your body. Externally rotate the right hip so your hips are squared straight forward. Your left hip should not be above your right hip. Pull your belly button toward your lower back to tighten your core and flatten your back. You want to feel a lot of stretching through your back of your right leg and then really point the toes as much as you can. Make your body as long as possible. Press the fingertips forward. Last five seconds here. Three, two, one, and then come back up. Plant the left foot. Release your hands, switch sides. Left foot forward now, right leg back. Starting off in the high lunge. Bring your left arm, sorry, both arms up. Interlace your fingers overhead. Point the index fingers. Squeeze the legs toward one another. Make sure that left hip is pressing down. You feel the weight in the left glute even before you start. Breathe in and lift. Exhale, warrior three, left side. Point the fingertips forward. Reach your right toes back. Really point the toes, hinging at the hips. Again, T-shape with the body here. Press the arms forward and then squeeze your arms up. Pull your belly button toward your lower back. Make a T-shape with the body, reaching forward and up, reaching the toes back. Five more seconds. See if you can go a little deeper. Squeeze the abs, lift the legs, point the toes. And then stand all the way back up. Release your hands down and straight into a plank. Plank's gonna feel easy after that. Hands under your shoulders, lift the hips, squeeze your legs toward one another, press the top of your head forward and look slightly forward. Try to regain your breathing now. Cool thing about yoga is there are no breaks, but that's okay because we're gonna go from one pose to another pose and hopefully use a muscle that wasn't used as much in the last pose. One more breath here. And then into a low plank. So pull your body forward. Bring the shoulders level with the elbows. Keep the elbows above the wrist. Squeeze your elbows in tight to your body. Pull your body forward even more. Keep your belly button up. Keep your core engaged. And we're here just for a couple of seconds. Try to pull your shoulder blades together so you feel the weight in your upper back, your arms, and your chest, not just the shoulders. One breath. And release down. From here, flip your feet. Push into an up dog. Press the tops of your feet down. Press down. Lift into up dog. Legs are off the ground. Knees are off the ground. Feet pressing into the floor, squeezing toward one another. Shoulder blades pull toward one another. Shoulders are down, top of the head presses up. Abs stay tightly engaged. Again, squeeze the toes together and press the feet into the ground. Lengthen your torso. Press the top of the head up and then look up. <clears throat> One breath here. And then from here, take it into a dolphin. So we're gonna go ahead and forearms down. 
Walk your feet in, kind of like a down dog, except forearms down. Squeeze your legs toward one another. Squeeze the forearms and the elbows toward one another. So elbows and legs squeezing toward one another. Trying to make that pyramid shape with your body. You're gonna feel stretching through the shoulders here. Upper back is gonna be working. Hamstrings stretching. Again, thighs are really engaged. Abs are engaged. Neck is relaxed. Last little bit in dolphins, squeezing your legs toward one another. Elbows are in, tightening the abs, last breath. And then let it all go, knees down. All right, from here we're gonna move into a wide stance. So go ahead and stand up, face sideways, press into the outer edges of your feet. Squeeze your thighs toward one another, reach your tailbone down. We wanna to have totally neutral alignment with your spine. Stay nice and tall, ribs up away from the hips. Turn your right foot to face straight forward and then bend into your right knee, sinking into warrior two. Knee is right above the ankle on your front foot. Press your left hip into your right hip. So your goal here is actually try and get the left hip below the right hip. You're gonna feel stretching through the groin. We wanna feel lots of core engagement. Reach the tailbone down, make sure that your lower back isn't arching here. Now squeeze your legs toward one another, almost as if the mat were sliding apart or your feet were sliding apart. Lift the ribs up away from the hips so you're staying nice and tall. Bring your arms out in opposite directions. Breathe in, get tall. And as you exhale, look over your right hand. Sink into that right knee a little bit more. Keep driving down through the right heel. If you're not feeling your right glute engage here, if you're not feeling the hip engage, squeeze your knee, your right knee, toward the right. That's gonna help you get your glutes engaged. One more breath in warrior two. And then from here into side angle. Right wrist inside the knee. Reach your left arm straight up. Keep a long straight line from your left foot through your left shoulder. So the left side of the body tightens here. My, my arm isn't resting on the knee here. It's just kind of inside the knee. Left arm is reaching up, so I'm feeling still that opening through the groin, still a lot of work for the right leg, but also using my left leg to support the left leg here, to support the right leg. Again, left arm is reaching up, looking up at my left hand. This could be a challenge for balance. That's okay. We're almost done. Two more breaths. Try to lift your torso using your core strength. So we're not collapsing here, but staying nice and tall. One more breath. And then back to warrior two. Straighten the right leg, turn it in. And now pivot, left foot out. Same thing, opposite side. Sink into your left knee. Push your right hip into your left hip. Knee is right above the ankle. If you notice that your knee is going past the ankle, you can crawl your foot forward a little bit. Make sure that you don't feel any pinching or any tension in your lower back. Your lower back should be neutral here, so not overly arched. You also want your hips between your feet. So if you notice that your hips are out behind, bring your hips forward, reach the tailbone down, and then squeeze the legs toward one another. That's gonna help you engage all the right muscles. Again, to get your left glute engaged, we're gonna squeeze the left knee out toward the left and continue to drive down through the left heel and the big toe. Arms come out, extending in opposite directions. Look over your left hand. Take a couple breaths here. And even if you're tired, we want to try and maintain that controlled breathing. From here on to side angle, left wrist goes inside the knee, reach your right arm up, straight line from the right heel through the ribs to the shoulder, look up at your right hand, and again, stay tall. So your left arm isn't actually supporting any weight here. You're using your core to hold yourself up. Maybe sinking a little bit deeper into that left foot. Still weight in the left hip. Two more deep breaths here. Make sure you're trying to push into the outer edge of your back foot. That's gonna help with your ankle mobility in this pose. And we're getting a nice twist through the spine here to help with strengthening your spine and your core. One more breath. See if you can go a little deeper. And then back up to a warrior two. Straighten the left leg. Turn your foot in and take a wide-legged forward fold. Squeeze your legs toward one another. Pull your chest forward. 
Tighten your abs as you fold, just like you would do for a crunch. Tuck your chin. Look behind you and slow down your breathing. You've got a couple breaths here in this active forward fold. So active, legs squeezing toward one another, tightening the thighs, squeezing the hip flexors, squeezing the abs so that we're not passively stretching. We're protecting our spine, we're protecting the knees by keeping the muscles active. One more breath here in the wide-legged forward fold, stretching in the backs of the thighs and the inner thighs, maybe a release in the back and stretching in the ankles. And then go ahead and pull your chest forward, bring your hands to your hips, come all the way back up from here into a horse. So we're going to have you turn the toes slightly out at a minimum 45 degrees out. If you're really mobile in your hips, maybe you can go all the way out to 180 degrees. I'm not that mobile, so I'm going to go somewhere in the middle. We're going to squeeze the knees toward the back, bring the hips forward, reach the tailbone down. So I'm getting my back as neutral as possible here. There's going to be a lot of stretching in my groin. Stay lifted. So pull, pull the ribs up away from the hips and then sit down into horse or goddess pose. Squeeze your knees toward the back. And if you notice that your knees go over your toes, bring your feet a little bit wider. This pose is all about hip strength and endurance. We're going to focus on develop, developing glute strength. We're focusing on developing thigh endurance, working on the quadriceps as well and also core strength, so keeping your chest upright. The last, very, the last flourish of this pose is to bring your arms up, elbows at shoulder level, palms facing forward, kind of in goal post arms. See if you can sit a little bit, a little bit lower, maybe kind of shifting from side to side. You've got two more deep breaths here, and this is the last standing pose of this series. Try to lengthen the spine. Make the core tight, spine neutral. One more breath. Lots of glutes, squeeze. And go ahead and stand up. Woo! Bring your feet back together. Breathe. And then take it down onto your back for bridge. So sitting on your back, bring your feet in toward your butt. Lay down. Tuck your chin toward your throat, keep your neck nice and long. Tighten your core just like you would do a plank. Bring your arms along your sides. And then press down through your feet to lift your hips. Squeeze your thighs toward one another. Reach your tailbone toward your knees. Tighten your glutes, lift your hips. Relax your arms along your sides. Make sure that your knees are squeezing in toward one another. If you want to challenge yourself, you can bring your feet in a little bit closer to your hips. The point of this is to feel your glutes, your thighs, your, uh, your core, but also your lower back engage. You shouldn't feel so much tension in the lower back that it's uncomfortable. It should feel like a good muscle engagement. Arms are relaxed along your sides. If you want, you can also interlace your fingers underneath your back for a little more shoulder opening. Holding this for 30 seconds. Make sure that you're pressing down through your feet, your hips are level. And then if you've got the interlaced fingers, reaching the arms forward, opening up the chest. Last breath. And then release down. From here, come up into a seated position. This is called boat pose. This is our final pose. I'm going to have you bring your feet in toward your butt, so about a foot and a half away from your hips. Grab onto your thighs, sit up as tall as you can, and now lean back, aim your sternum at the ceiling. And then if you feel good here, if you feel supported, lift your knees up, extend your legs forward, start with your shins parallel to the ground, and bring your arms out in front of you. Again, sternum lifting up toward the ceiling. Your goal here is to make your back flat, reaching the tailbone down, using your hip flexors to lift, and you're actually sitting on your sit bones, on your ischial tuberosity. Bringing the legs up if you can. Playing around with that balance. Trying to sit forward on the hips. Sitting up tall. If you want, extending the legs even more. Using your hip flexors to lift. <clears throat> One more big breath here. Lift high, knees up, chest up. 
and then releasing. Woo! All right, so that was the total body strength workout routine from Yoga Fitness for Men. If you're watching this video, it's probably because you are a Yoga Fitness for Men VIP. So thank you for being a VIP. If you've already purchased Yoga Fitness for Men, thank you so much for your support. I hope you're enjoying the book. And if you haven't yet, please uh, purchase the book. It's on Amazon, on either on pre-order now uh, or on sale after May 8th. You will also find this book in major bookstores like Barnes and Noble. Um, thanks for being part of the VIP list again. I hope you're enjoying the content. I look forward to you uh, enjoying the book. Have a good one. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that workout. Again, that was taken directly from my Yoga Fitness for Men book. The book has a pose guide section, workouts to follow along to, and even a program section to help you get started. It's the ultimate resource for learning yoga and getting results. So if you wanna get the book, it's available internationally. I invite you to purchase yourself a copy and then make sure to send your order confirmation to help at manfulyoga.com and we'll set you up with free access to six bonus videos taken directly from the book. Those are available exclusively through my website at manfulyoga.com. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.